Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of uh, Playmakers as Justin Marshall and myself uh, continue on this uh, All Black tour of Australia and of course there was no game for the All Blacks this week but that's not going to stop us because we've got an absolute legend of Australian rugby joining us on the uh, podcast today in David Campisi Campo. Grant. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, Let's talk about uh, the match between Argentina and Australia in Newcastle. Uh, Was there much to talk about? Uh, very frustrating. Um, obviously, I know Michael Checker pretty well, and I spoke to Check during the week, um, and especially after beating New Zealand last week, and he said, mate, the, the guys were... He thought this week might have been a bit harder to play, because they're obviously the high of last week, mm. they haven't beaten New Zealand, I think, since 1985. I think that's the, the record. So then he was hoping that, you know, they'd do pretty well. Um, but from our point of view... You know, they talked about the, the, the beat New Zealand in, in Brisbane. But I said, well, the week before was more important because the Bledisloe was up for grabs, you know. Mm. We didn't play well. The next week we played well. You know, seven days is a long day in between test matches. But I just think that there's, it's a very young group. Um, but last night I was there watching and, you know, it's really game management. I think we, we got a lot of young guys. It's, I understand that. Uh, we've got a whole new coaching team. They've been coaching overseas. It's a different style as well, you know. And a lot of our players, I think, are struggling with understanding the game because they've all got their structures. But if it doesn't work, what do you do? Sometimes someone's got to say, guys, oh, this is not working, you know. And you can see, you know, if Hodge gets tackled at 10, there's no playmaker. So really the opposition realise the next guy is going to get the ball he's going to just hit it up so we can smash him sort of thing. He's understand the game and, and like we just kicked the ball away too much. Every time we, I think in the last minute, we had three on two and we kicked the ball away. Mm. I mean, if you haven't got the ball, you can't win games. Mm. Talk, talking about that game management, are, are you concerned about the lack of depth that Australian rugby... Look, there's no doubt you're bringing through mm. lots of young players, which is brilliant, and I think they are the future of the game, but... When you lose the likes of O'Connor and Tamua, yeah. and then you're playing a centre at 12 in Paisami, you're having to put a sort of a guy that hadn't had only played 10 once before in yeah. the World Cup, thrust them into it. Are you, are you concerned? Because you're talking game management, mm. kicking the ball away, yep. obviously missing overlaps, that there's not that depth there? Yeah, well, I think for many years now that we've had a problem where you know, I, I get in trouble all the time because, you know, you, you never, you'll never get an Aussie catch the All Blacks. Will you? <laughs> no, you well, probably won't. Appreciate. No, you won't. But no, I'm you won't. Say, <laughs> but you won't get South Africa. You won't get an Australian or a Kiwi coaching South Africa. Yeah. Every country's unique. Everyone, like the French. The French have got flair. You guys play the way you play. We play. We used to have a great back line. We used to have great skills. And we, that's, how, that's how we used to play. Um, now, everyone wants to play the same. You know, at halftime, I think sometimes you take, change jerseys of the teams, you wouldn't know who's who. Because they all do the same, really. Um, last couple of years, the All Blacks' skills have really improved. Um, I've always said now that you guys play the way we used to play, and we play the way you used to play, with the skills, the short passes, running angles and all that. Mm. We've lost that. Um, but this generation has been brought through. So I've been in South Africa for 10 years, watching the wingers, and as I mentioned, you know, a lot of these guys on the wing are finishers, but yet they don't get one-on-one often with a guy in a game of rugby, you know. The whole idea of, of 13 is to create space for the fullback and winger. Mm-hmm. We've got 13s now that just want to smash it up. We've got 12s who want to smash it up. You know, there's, everyone used to have a role. Maybe it's, I'm, I am old, I know that, but I mean, rugby's still a great game and really about you playing against your opposition to, to try and beat him. Number nines, you know, you, go, you and George used to fight all the time, yeah. but you used to niggle each other, but you still had your role to do. Um, and if you watch the game last night, it's like I'm sitting there going, you know, um, when we scored the try, um, all, the, all the winger had to do was just change his angle to make it an easier pass. It's impossible under pressure, someone about to smash you, to throw a 10-metre pass. You know, Corabetti, all he had to do was change his angle. But because for the last 10, 15 years, there's none of us older guys been putting knowledge back into the younger guys, you can see that some of these guys are struggling in position. They're not real sure, to me, that's what I reckon, is what their role is. Yes, they've got, they're all told what to do, but if it's not working, uh, okay, guys, uh, let's try something different. 
the game's been changed. The coaches have got so much. Yes, it's a professional era. Yes, they're getting paid big bucks. Win, lose, or draw, you determine who the coach is. But um, I just think it's it's just gone too far. Players should be able to make decisions. Um, and you know, in our day when we played, you know, the coach wasn't allowed on the oval. Mm-hmm. The reserve would come down and say, "Here's the letter from the coach." <laughs> You'd read, well, "Okay, guys, let's sort out the problem." <laughs> but now yeah. they go into a dressing room, they sit down, the coaches tell them what they got to do, out they go again. You know, is that? Pro- and of course, they got the water boys, so called, running out. Well, they're all coaches. Every, yeah, exactly. You know, and I think Australia had Steve Nance, Nance, uh, who was the defence coach years ago in Muggleton. And they used to stand behind the post, tell the guys, "Watch out, the defence out here." I mean, your job is the job. You know, you should know what your role is. And I just think that's we've lost that because of league and Aussie rules. You know, it's an excuse, but we we need to entertain. We need to start creating a style of rugby that everyone wants to play. At the moment, the scrums we talked about the scrums take five minutes in the game. You know, you got the line outs, you got the TMOs. The World Cup uh, first game in 2011 in England went for 100 minutes. <laughs> England, Fiji, 100 minutes of rugby. Now you're getting, uh, with the, first, the one in Wellington was 85 or 86 minutes, wasn't it? Extra mm. time. Mm. Yeah, all of that, 89. Yeah, 89 think, yeah. minutes. Mm. So it's mm. going because there's too much of this, there's too much happening. Uh, and they've made the game very, very complex, you know, and the coaches are very, very structured, I think, these days. So when you were standing on the wing, um, and, and I know this was the case for us with Jonah, we, we weren't manipulating a back move to give him an overlap, like what it looks like the mm. teams are trying to do now. We were looking to manipulate a move that he gets a one-on-one. Yeah. And if you're standing on the wing and you are c- controlling the tempo onto the ball, you as a player with your goose step, step yeah. and all your footwork and all that, that's all you want. Mm rifling onto it, and like you said, take a winger on one-on-one yeah. and have a go at beating him. It's not, is, is that what your thought, thought well, process is? Well, You're well, saying yeah. you make Michael Lino or whoever, mate, just yeah. give me the ball with a one-on-one, hit me flat, and I'm off. Uh, yeah, look, I, I just think that um, what's happened now is I'm not a big guy. You know, I mean, playing, and the, the, the problem about Jonah in uh, the uh, 96 game when we played in Wellington, uh, I changed wings and Jonah followed me and I looked and I said, mate, what are you doing over come on. I went to the other way, he came across. I said, I know, really? Do you want to know why he followed you? Uh, no, I don't know, but I can understand. Because yeah, he... you were a captain that game, weren't you? No, I wasn't. No, I'd never captain. John Eels was captain. Oh, right, because someone, someone, I think someone told, an air team told Jonah that it was you that took the team away and oh, didn't oh, face the hacker. Oh, thanks. Jonah was right? like... Campo, and so wherever you moved, obviously he was following. I kept you. on like I said, this just <laughs> can't be happening, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think that's well, you know. To me, Jonah Lomu, everyone wanted to see Jonah with the ball. Yeah. That's all. I don't give a, you know, as a as a winger, his work rate off the ball was very ordinary. But no one cares about that because all they wanted to see him run, and you did that. You look at the tries he scored. He was always you always try to create space for him. I was the same in the back line. You know, you try and create space with someone who can score tries. Mm-hmm. 10, 15 metres out, I scored. That was my job. That's all I had to do. So you find ways to score. Um, now, it's side, sideways. They're trying to do all these offload things. But simple pass works. But they don't want to do that. They want to do it. And even last night, and I, some guy um, on Instagram said, what do you think of the game? I said... One of the problems of the game now, if you go and have a look at most of the tries in world rugby, when in the modern, in the amateur era again, or as we start professional, was all passing before contact. Now, 95% of the tries are scored after contact. Mm-hmm. When Sonny Bill came along, it's all through now. That's what they try and do. Where in our day, it was like run at you two, manipulate someone, put the ball in the space and change angles. Yeah. How did you used to feel? I mean... Australia used to try different ways of combating the Haka, and I think they're still trying it, actually. So, what, I mean, tell us about what you used to think. We played against the All Blacks, and the one in 96 was a bit of a mess where Greg Smith said, oh, we'll just go and do some skills down the corner. You know, the All Blacks go. They, it took a long time for them to come out, and that was, what, 46-6, I think it was. There's a flog in. Uh, I did in the World Cup 91, um, and the only reason I did it was, mate, I, I just did it. It wasn't, I consciously said, I'm not going to face it today. Because we were never told, the coaches said, just do what you want to do. It was never say, right, we stand together now, like they hold arms and, and all that. Um, 
But it was, mate, I think it was part of the game. I'm glad we won that game because I would have copped a lot of crap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, look, I think it's great for the game. I think we still need it. Um, we've got the Fijians, the Tongans. And I think back in the old days, I think uh, South Africa had something. I think the Wallabies, this is back, well, they used to do something as well. So, look, everyone knows what it's about. And I think it's a great, it's a great way to start a game of rugby. But yeah, it's a big part of the game. You mentioned 91, mm. obviously, uh, World Cup w- uh, win for you. Yeah. Um, but that game against the All Blacks, uh, don't worry, Grizz is not watching. You, you thought that well, maybe... I was going to say, we, we, we went out on Thursday nights yeah. and uh, I was with Kearns and Mackenzie and we went to a bar and Grizz was having a few drinks. And he said, what are you guys doing here? Oh, don't we just having a drink? Like I was just drinking orange juice, Yeah. but he was a bit upset. And I said, where's your boys? Oh, no, they're in the hotel. I said, okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see, he was under a bit of pressure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, it was, it was fantastic. I think it was... Um, I think one of those tournaments where, mate, we just everything happened. You know, I think the the what was it? Argentina Saturday, Samoa on the Wednesday. I think it was only nine six that game. That was a tough one. Mm. Uh, I think Frank Bunce played in that game actually. Um, then we went to Wales, Ireland, New Zealand, England. So there was no really America or a, it was every game was you know had to sort of perform. But I just think we we had a great combination. We had good players, um, and especially for me after the British Lions eighty nine. Uh, make mistake, then two years later you win the World Cup, so you've got mm. to take the good with the bad. Yeah. You know, but I still think that um, you guys made a big mistake by not putting Tui Gamala on the wing, Tumu at fullback. It'd been Kieran Crowley across, hadn't played any games, mm-hmm. and I think that that could have made a bit of a difference. And obviously Jonesy not playing because it's a Sunday, as well. That's yeah. you know, but that's part of what they believe in. So and he would have yeah. been, yeah, the All Blacks would have been prepared for... Well, they, I just think you can, you, you talked about teams, you can just sense, you know, we played them in Sydney, I think it was 24-15, I think it was, we beat them here. And then two weeks later, we played in in Auckland. I think we lost, was it 9-6 or 9-3? Crap game of rugby, not a great game. But after that game, out of all the All Black games I played against, I knew we'd beat you in the World Cup. I could just sense that they just were, like us in 95, we were just getting a bit over, four years later, Mm-hmm. You know, you get a bit older, you haven't got the, the get up and go again. And New Zealand just sort of, to me, had that. You beat the All Blacks eight times, which is a heck of a lot, to be honest. Yep. Um, given that most players would be lucky to win one. Yeah. Um, was that the most memorable of them all? No, I think there was, there was a lot of good games. And I think the uh, obviously playing against Stu early on, you know, he wasn't around. And he invited me back to his testimonial back in 1983. But I think um, the 95 game here when I was dropped... And after the World Cup, and um, I, I got on, ran on at number, at number 16. I ran on, and uh, I didn't tackle much in my life. I, I think I had four tackles I counted. And in this game, Joni gets the ball, and I actually tackled him. And I'm actually on the ground, and Sean Fitch said, mate, what are you doing? I've got no idea. I've got no, <laughs> idea. no idea how I tackled him. But you can actually see us laughing at each other. That was rugby. Yeah. To me, that was because I'd played against each other many times. And it got so bad that Fitzy used to hang on the wing all the time. He just wanted to be a winger and score these tries, you know, mm. instead of getting in there. But uh, no, I think it was just the, the rivalry, you know, it was just the, the tradition. And um, we learned a lot from the All Blacks because that's all that's what we used to play all the time. And that's how we became good. I, I was very fortunate. My background was not a private, I went to a government school. I played league all my life. Oh, yeah. You know, from six to 18, played league. I, went, I tried for the Australian schoolboys in rugby league in 77, won a golf championship at 15. Uh, played Aussie rules, played cricket, whatever. <clears throat> and I just went over and played fourth grade rugby in 79 for this team. And it was the best year of my rugby life because I played with all the 38 year olds who'd been there, done that, and they'd teach you if you did the right thing or wrong thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I, that's why I went to New Zealand. They said, you know, how do you feel like Mark and the great Stu Wilson? I said, well, Stu who? <laughs> no, honestly, I had yeah. no idea because I'm this country guy. I had no idea about what rugby was about. I only just started for a couple of years. But what happened was, from day one, my attitude was professional. I didn't, it wasn't about the money. I didn't really, it was just, I trained hard. I did everything I wanted to do. And that's what really frustrates me is, why aren't these guys the best players in the world? They've got all the technology, they've got all everything, all the time in the world, mm. and they don't. You know, I could kick right foot, left foot. I practiced, I wanted to be good. Mm. And it wasn't about the, the money. You know, I played one year of professional rugby. It didn't change my attitude. You know, I was getting paid. So are they, are they too regimented today? Uh, where's that individual flair that you're talking about? Well, coaches don't like it. They don't like flair mm. because they can't control it. Simple. Danny Cipriani. 
I mean, I was at Twickenham watching him making a run against Australia. He's made a, a run from his own half. He's, he's running into this, a, the wall of his 22. The rest of the players are halfway getting ready for the next phase. And he's looking around going, oh, God, what happened? Curly Beals, you know, you've got uh, McKenzie now. He's a great little player, you know. But they're the guys you've got to allow to play. But coaches don't like that um, because they want to control. Because even Rod McQueen had Chris Latham guys like that who were sort of told not to really play that way because they didn't know what he was going to do you know and that's that's wrong we we need characters we need guys who can yeah, play i agree you know you yeah. don't want these huge guys eddie jones is you know he's gone totally he's got these massive guys who smashed the ball up mm. you know there's no players that want to go try different things and um chip kicks here and there but you know i mean you guys sanchez did against you guys mm. when someone does something different no one knows what's happening yeah. Well, you can't do that. That shouldn't happen. No, but I'm saying that's where our game's lost. It's lost because it's so controlled uh, that every player's got to be in the right position at the right time. But that's what they do. They don't look what's in front. They look. They all ball watch. You have a look at the games now from when you go into commentary. The wingers are looking over there. I say, mate, I can't do anything over there. My job is to look what's here. Mm. And that's mm. where there's always an overlap where guys kick the ball. Yeah. Taylor Penny did it, I think, this year. Was it last year against uh, Crusaders in um, in Christchurch? In the 22, he's the fullback. The the, um, the Crusaders wingers right on the sideline, kicks across and scores the try. Mm. Mate, that's your job. My job was to mark Jonah, or Wright, or Green, or John Kerwin. It wasn't to watch the guys in the ruck. That was my job. If you let your winger score three tries in the old days, say, mate, you're gone. See ya. You, everyone had a role to do. Now it's just, it doesn't, they all ball watch. And it's freedom as well, isn't it? The freedom to play. Like, but um, if you can do something different, the opposition next time are going to say, uh, okay, well, we've got to make sure that this guy, we, you know, but when you pop up anywhere, you know, the, the, you, you make the defence think about what's happening, you know, but we don't do the switches and loops anymore. No. To get someone to come simple cut back, back yeah, I agree. Which brings me back to the laws of the game, um, you two guys who have got opinions on it for sure. Mm, yeah. Is it because of the laws of the game we're losing this spontaneity? Well, I mean, I, I, I firstly, I don't know why we went to a drop kick start of a game. I don't know where that came from. I don't know who invented that, but that was ridiculous. Mm. No other sport in the world is a drop kick. <laughs> we decided to bring it along. Uh, now in sevens, you score a try, you've got to restart the game to give the team the opposite. Yes, you know, yes. So, you know, laws have changed, but have they changed for the better of the game? You know, I, I what you talked about there, Justin, was... You know, in the old days, used to play, used to have backs v backs, you know, and you know you can manipulate someone by doing a, a move and all that. Now there's so many out because rucking is the key. You've got to bring back rucking because that's the only way to get the team going backwards mm -hmm. and backwards. And that was the old days. I mean, let's, you know, you can bring a law if you touch someone in the head, you're gone for six months. I don't, I don't really mind, care. But I know safety is important. But you look at the, the amount of head-eye tackles. Guys now shoulder charging. But one of the worst things you can see is when there's a clear out at the ruck, when the guy's about to pass, the guy just actually <laughs> uses that. I mean, it's more dangerous. Bucky's boy used to do that, mate. The ball's gone and he used to smell like six foot eight, 120 kilos. Yeah. Gee, I tell you. But why, why do we change the line out? Why do we walk to a line out? Mm. That's time. Why? why? So in sevens, they do exactly the same. Sevens is seven minutes. You know, um, the scrum is a mess. The scrum used to be there to restart the game and to create, to ignite the back line. That was the scrum. And in our day, remember, there's the, the scrums were, the number 10 used to be like flat behind the number eight. We weren't 10 metres back. Mm -hmm. And the opposition were right behind the number eight's foot as well. And you, you used to run straight at somebody and someone, they used to, to, not run sideways because they couldn't because if you did someone was going to the post um lifting in the line outs as well i mean why are you a good line out when someone you get lifting in the old days used to jump mm. um but the thing that i find interesting that you kick off you know you get the ball you run in and there's been a lot of photos i've got where the opposition uh i've tackled someone the team in the 22 have got about eight guys on the ground <laughs> So, okay, so you take eight of them out of the game, you've got seven left, and they've got one on the ground, so they've got 14. So there's no way you're going to run against 14, is it? It doesn't really add up. Mm -hmm. 
you know. So, but you see that a lot. And the other thing that really amazes me as a winger, why, if you had Richie McCall standing there, would someone run at Richie McCall and go straight to ground in front of his feet as one of the best flankers in the world? Yeah. yeah. Or Hooper or George Smith. But they do. They run at him. <laughs> they get tackled and say, thank you. Really? You don't try and do that. You, if you're going to run at someone like that, to me, it was like when we played Michael Jones. And I'd say, guys, listen, if Jones is in the bottom of a ruck, we'll go wide. Because <laughs> he can't get there. But if he's hanging out there, guys, just don't go to the ground straight away. Mm-hmm. Because he's going to win the ball. To me, that's common sense. But maybe I'm thinking about it too easily. But that's the game's changed. <clears throat> you know, the tactics have changed. Um, there's too much interference from the guys on the sideline. Um, I think David Trick, who was an ex-England player uh, from Bath, and um, I catch up with Hong Kong all the time. A couple of years ago, he's on the board of, at Bath Rugby. And he said after one local game, one of the coaches came down and said to him, we tried to get 102 messages out to the Oval in 80 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're right, the classic way that Wallabies used to play, you know, they used to always have great stepping backs with quick hands, um, really slick and, you know, Forwards that were mobile, yeah. good off line outs, good off scrums, quick and play. And that's the traditional way to play. And I started to see a little bit of that in New Zealand because yeah. I thought they were starting to use the ball, they had some manipulation. They was, and then since then, though, when, since getting back to Australia, it feels like they've completely changed yeah. the way they've played. I think you've got different characters. I think you guys have lost, there's a lot of leadership. I think, if you think, you know, I look at the guys like Kieran Reid, mate, great player. Yeah. You know, and he, he was a good player, you know. And I, I keep on saying to people, well, you know, if you look at New Zealand, you had, uh, like, even yourself, Aaron Smith, uh, Reed, uh, then you had uh, Barrett and the number 10s, or Carter, you know, some of the best in the world. Then you look at our players and you go, well, OK, well, David Pocock was a flanker. He played number eight, couldn't pass. I mean, he wasn't a playmaker. He was a runner. Yeah. So the opposition go, well, we don't worry about him because we know that he can't really pass. He can run. So let's go and hit the number 10, who's the playmaker. Mm-hmm. So that's how you look at a game. Instead of saying, guys, okay, well, you know, let's start to really think about how we play here. And it's hard when you lose a lot of a lot of caps as well, Massive. which you did 2015 as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you lost a lot of plays, but what happened, you've got a, such a good system coming through where we, we haven't got that because, you know, you've got, you got uh, Brad Thorne, who's a, a forward up, who's a called New Zealander. Uh, you had, um, uh, we had Penny, we had um, uh, Gibbo as well. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, you know, I, I um, said to, to uh, I think, Hamish McLennan, I said, you know, we had coffee and I said, if I was, for example, hypothetically, um, keep going to be a coach of New Zealand, like, I know I haven't, what I would do, I'd go to the, the chairman and say, listen, have you got 10 of your best players or can you give me some players so I can understand what your traditions are? Because I'm an Australian, mm-hmm. I would like to know. You know, I coached uh, the Sharks in South Africa, I was a skills coach. Mate, you've got Corsa, you've got uh, all these different nationalities. You know, the the colours, the blacks, and the, the Afrikaans are all different. Mate, it's difficult. Understand what their traditions. You know, you can't sort of say certain things or do to understand the game. Um, in New Zealand, be the same. But in Australia, no one's come out here and gone. Okay, well, I need to. Why don't I get Mark Ella? You know, that's where I think Robbie Deans did wrong. He came in and wanted to play Robbie Deans rugby. We're not Robbie De- We're not Crusaders. from Crusaders. Mm. You know, we're Australians. Mm. Mm. Uh, to find out, okay, right, this is how you guys play. But no one does that. They come in and say, right, this is the way I coach, this is it. Well, sometimes it doesn't really work. You know, it'll take a while. I'm sure, he's, I'm sure I know Dave Rennie. I'm sure he's a good coach. But every country, as I said before, has got its way of playing. And we are at our best when we have got the players in the back line, steppers who can create opportunities. And that's where I think we're, we're missing out big time. All right, boys. We could, we could go on forever. It's been fascinating uh, campaign. Yeah. Thanks very much for joining us, mate. It You're really welcome. has been good. Appreciate it. So join us uh, next time for our next edition of Playmakers. <laughs>